Freaking Out the Neighborhood by Mac DeMarco. I know nothing about this song. I know nothing about Mac DeMarco other than how to play this song and what it sounds like. I have these sunglasses. $17.99, I got them at CVS, bought them for a trip to Vegas. They're great, but they, act, they look kind of huge. They're kind of big. These are big sunglasses. My name is Stuart. Welcome to Guitar Lessons with Stuart. We're just going to learn this intro riff to Freaking Out the Neighborhood by Mac DeMarco. Is it a riff or is it like a melody? What's it really? What's the difference between a riff and a melody? I define a riff as a short, repeated, rhythmic guitar part. So this is a riff. It's short, it's repeated, it's rhythmic. Let's get to work. Would you please put your middle finger on the ninth fret of the B string, that second to bottom to string, second to bottom to string, middle finger right there. Ring finger goes right below the middle finger on the E string, the high E also on the ninth fret. So you can see we've got these two fingers right next to each other, the B string and E string. There we go. The dots on my guitar are a little weird. You might see this double dot here and think this is a 12th fret. Guess what? It's not. It's the ninth fret. Both fingers, ninth fret, bottom two strings. Are we done talking about these two notes yet? Let's play it. Play me the B string and then play the E string. There we go. Both fingers down. With the pick, I'm plucking down on the B string and up on the E string. So I'm alternating between picking down and up. You could pluck down on both. You could pick up on both, but I think that would be a big mistake. And I think you should pluck down and then up. And guess what? We're going to repeat that thing again. We're going to go, uh, 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 uh. Then we're going to do it again. That was six notes total playing nine, 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 nine. I'm just trying to make this as confusing as possible. Check it out. Would you do that for me? One, two, three, four, five, six. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Left hand is not moving at all. It's just parked on those two notes. As soon as we finish playing those six siren-like notes, your pointer finger is going to shoot on down to the sixth fret of the high E string, bottom string of the guitar. Check this out. One, two, three. Four, bing, bang, bing, bong, bing, bang, six. Let's do that again. Let's do it slower. One, two, here we go. Boo, ba, boo, ba, boo, ba, bang. All right, this rhythm. These, these notes are like almost triplets. Like I kind of think of them like triplets, but I don't think they quite are. If you're not familiar, triplets are when you fit three notes into the space of two notes, basically. That's like a... A very oversimplified version of it, but basically we're just cramming three notes in the space of two. So it's like triple it, triple it. But like I said, I don't think they're quite triplets. They're a little bit different. Here's how you here's how you practice this rhythm. You put on the recording of the song "Freaking Out the Neighborhood" by Mac DeMarco, and you just play this part along with it. If you need to. You go to YouTube playback settings, switch it down to 75%. You set it to 75% playback speed, and then you play along with it until you have a feel for the rhythm. There we go. That's my cop out answer I always give. Just play along with the recording. It works. Shut up. All right, so. Get into that sixth fret right there. This is my favorite part of the whole song. So much fun to play because we get to make a little staircase with our fingers. We just get to make a little staircase. What am I talking about? Pointer finger on six of the bottom string, the high E string. Middle finger goes to seven on the B string, the next string. Then your ring finger gets to play the eighth fret on the G string, the next one. Look, see this little staircase we just made? You just can walk up the staircase. And that's just what your pick is gonna do. It's just gonna walk up the staircase. Nine, 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 six, seven, eight. We did it. Walked up the staircase. Did the siren, siren staircase. They should have called the song Siren Staircase. Bonka, 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 uh, uh, uh. All right. 
What are we gonna do now? That's right, we're gonna walk down the staircase. So you just played eight on the G string, then you're gonna go back to seven on the B string, back to six on the E string. We went up the staircase, down the staircase. Mind you, do not repeat the eighth fret on the G string twice. We only play it once. So when you get to the top of the stairs, do you stand on the top step and then jump on it and then walk down the stairs? You might, I don't know. I'm not at your house when you're walking up and down the stairs. Honestly, I don't know why you're walking up the stairs and then immediately walking down the stairs. Anyway, you probably forgot to bring your glass of water up to bed with you and you're going down to grab it. And so when you walk up the stairs, you go, oops, I forgot my glass of water before bedtime. Do you sit there on the top step, jump once and then go back down? No, so don't do it when you're playing Freaking Out the Neighborhood by Mac DeMarco. Six, seven, eight, right back to seven on the B string, right back to six on the E string. I'm pretty sure now that we grabbed our glass of water, we're gonna walk back up the staircase. Let me make sure though. Oh, we're, we're gonna walk halfway back up the staircase. This is making it easier to understand, right? So check this out. We went six, seven on the next string, eight on the next one, back to seven on the next string, back to six on the bottom. Then we're gonna go back to seven on the B string. Is that a thing that you can play for me, with me right now? One, two, start right there. Six, seven, eight, seven, six, seven. I know it makes it so much easier when I just start screaming numbers at you in the middle of the song. Right after you play this note right here, seventh fret on the B string, you're gonna slide up to nine. Again, ignore the weird dots on my guitar. I promise this is the ninth fret. You're sliding from seven up to nine. If you are not super comfortable with sliding, here's a little tip. Try not to slide your thumb along with your finger. You've got your finger on the seventh fret, your thumb back here. When you slide up to nine, try to keep your thumb in the same spot and just pivot your finger over. I'm not sure if pivot your finger over is a good way to describe that at all. I think we're pivoting with the thumb? I don't know what pivot means. And we're like this, then we go like that. Kinda, kinda sorta, you, you, you get me. Thumb isn't really moving. It's just kind of pivoting back and forth. Should I do that some more? No, that's enough. Whoa. All right, you just uh, play that a hundred times or whatever, right? Okay. Now, let's play it from the beginning. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Hey, ha, hoo, ha, hoo, hey. Uh, uh, uh. One, two, do it again. Notice how when I slide right there, I'm playing seven, slide up to nine. I am not replaying the note when I get up to nine. I'm just playing it on seven and then slide. Another thing with this stupid slide that I can't stop talking about, you don't want to go like, you don't want to immediately shoot up to nine. You want to play seven and then slide up to nine. We want to hear both notes. We're like mostly done with this already. After you slide up to nine. I give it a little, a little wiggle, a little vibrato. You don't have to, I, if we're being honest, I don't know if they do that in the recording. I just like doing it because it looks cool. Is that, is that cool? Does this make me cool? Am I cool? After you play that, we're gonna jump all the way up to 14 on the high E string. An easy way to find 14, little known fact, 14 comes two after 12. So you find the 12th fret, which usually has two dots, but my guitar is weird and it doesn't have two dots. And then you just go two frets up from there. This right here, hardest part of the entire song. I would like you to trust what I'm about to tell you. I would like you to put your ring finger on the 14th fret. Is that a thing that you could do for me today? So there's 14, okay, that's great. Here's the thing, we wanna bend that note. We wanna bend it. If you just use your ring finger to try to bend that note, there's a very good chance it's gonna sound like this. 
Or maybe like this, like that. Ne neither of those are optimal situations. What I would like you to do, get your ring finger on 14, your middle finger on 13, and your pointer finger on 12. So we've got three fingers there, all pushing down on the same string. Do you see that right there? All three fingers right next to each other, all in that string, ring finger on 14. I'm pushing with all three fingers. I'm gonna play the 14th fret, and then using all three fingers, I'm gonna try to gently push the string up while still keeping the pressure against the neck of the guitar. That is the only way that I can successfully bend notes. If I try to use one finger, it's so hard to do, I can't get the rhythm right, I can't bend it far enough. Three fingers, all helping for that one note. We're gonna bend it quite a bit, and then you're gonna bend it right back to where it was. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna put a line in your finger. Oh, my fingers are hideous. There's like giant white spots on my finger. Those are like calluses that I've destroyed and I think I haven't been drinking enough water and the world is ending. After that bend right there, go to 12. Your pointer finger's there already, so all you have to do is pull your other fingers off. All right. Don't you love how I tell you what to do, and then I just play it six times in a row, and you just have to sit there and wait for me to be done with it, and it's not really helping you at all? After that, we're going to play 11, 9, and 7. So that was 11, 9, and 7. Not too hard to remember, because we just keep skipping a fret. 11, 9, 7. There is a rule of thumb, or should I say, rule of finger that says don't use your pointer finger for two notes in a row if you're moving to the left if you're moving lower on the fingerboard little known fact my computer was over here did you see that did you guys notice that i didn't notice it until just now it's gone no one saw anything no computer anywhere uh, rule of finger, is that what I was talking about? About using your pointer finger a bunch of times in a row? If you use your pointer finger a bunch of times in a row, especially if you're moving this direction, it can be, let's just say, problematic. But guess what? We're gonna do it anyway right here because that's how I play this song and I like doing it that way. So here's what I do. Bend, pointer finger on 12, ring finger on 11. See that intense look I gave you? I call that the Neil deGrasse Tyson look. He does that. He says something about dinosaurs, and then he goes. Ring finger. Then here's what I like to do. I like to do pointer finger on nine, and then I do pointer finger on seven again. It's maybe not the greatest technique in the world, but it works for me and my family. So that's the route that I'm going to take. I did it differently that time. Well, you know what? Sometimes you do things differently than other times. We've learned essentially the whole thing. Check it out. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, look, I do it a little bit differently each time. It's bad, bad teacher strategy to just do it differently when you're showing it to people. Anyway, I think I'm gonna start this over. Not gonna start it over, I'm gonna keep going. So what if the computer is in it? So what if I don't know what fingers I'm supposed to use? Nobody cares. I don't care. You don't care. I don't care about you. You don't care about me. All right, so we've got. What happens next? Well, I'll tell you what happens next. We do the exact same thing again with one tiny difference. We start back from the beginning. But this time, when we do the bendy thing and the 9 and 11, 7 thing of a jig, 11, 9, 7, we're gonna do it on the B string, second string from the top. Exact same frets, different string. Did you see that? That was literally the same thing. I just, instead of doing it down here on the bottom, I did it on the B string. From the top. One, two, here we go. Nine, 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 six. 
two, three, four, bottom string. But you're dead. I'm very tempted to make us play the whole thing from the beginning again, but I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna finish the song. Here's what happens. You play that first part, and you do the bendy thing on the bottom string. You do it again. Then you do the bendy thing on the B string. Then, then you do the first part again. Bendy thing on the E string. Then we're gonna do it again. Stay on this nine right here, and you're gonna go two, three, four. So here's what I just did there. I went nine, 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 nine. You are going to have to do some alternating picking. Alternate picking even. Alternate, alternating. Alternating picking. I said half to earlier instead of have to. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of shaken me to my core that I said half to so clearly. Library. Espresso. Library. Just getting it out of my system. Ninth fret. Down, up, down. So that right there, you're gonna be tempted to go down, down, down. It's just gonna sound dumb if you do that and you're gonna look like a fool. You have to go down, up, down. Here's what I recommend to practice this alternating picking, alternate picking, library picking. You're gonna hold the pick. Believe it or not, you're gonna hold the pick. You're gonna hold it at a little bit of an angle. Look at this, instead of, don't hold your pick flat against the string. What are you, crazy? You wanna have it at a little bit of an angle like this, like you're slicing into the string with the side of the pick. So you're not coming flat at it with the flat part. You're gonna slice at it with the side. That way this curve, this natural curve, look at that beautiful curve on the pick. It's Marin Music Center pick, look at that. Uh, this beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, curve of the pick, it's just, the string is just gonna glide over it and you're gonna be able to do this nice, smooth down, up, down. Uh, here's what you can do, you go down, up, down, and then you could just do down for the rest. There's that thing again where I just play something a bunch of times in a row to the benefit of no one. I was about to say we've learned the entire song. I'm not sure that's true. We definitely haven't learned the entire song, but the entire riff. But what I meant to say is I did a bunch of talking about random stuff while playing parts of the riff. And maybe if you paid very close attention, you figured out some of what I was talking about. How about we right now play the whole thing from the beginning very slowly. You knew it was coming. Let's do it. We're starting on nine, middle finger, ring finger. Nice and slow. One, two, here we go. Two, three, bottom string. Start it over. Two, second string. Start it over. Two, bottom string. Here we go. Two, three, here we go. We did it, we done it, did it. I'm including none of the chords. I'm gonna make another video with the chords, you guys. Or maybe I already did it. You don't know what order I did these in. I could even release this one today and release the chord one five years from now, but you wouldn't know. Maybe I did the chord one last week and you didn't even know it. I'm a poet. My name's Stuart. Welcome to my video. That is over. Oh, one more thing. One more thing, you guys. Sometimes you might notice when Mac DeMarco and his band play this, they put a capo on two. You don't actually need the capo on two. Because we're not playing any open strings. We're just playing like ninth fret and stuff. 
sounds exactly the same with or without the capo. They, I think they have the capo just for a couple chords later in the song. Who cares? This is, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. 